Okay, um, let's talk about information inheritance. Why? Um, what's still missing is how to estimate conversion rates, conversion values and bid adjustments. And of course it's no problem if you have a big amount of data, 10,000 clicks and some conversions and you are able to estimate the conversion rate quite precise. Question is what happens if you don't have enough data? There are two possibilities what you can do. The first is to aggregate the data over time. So instead of only taking into account the yesterday's data for one keyword, so the one day data, you could take into account the last seven days, of course, would result in more clicks and conversions and should uh, simplify the estimation of conversion rates and conversion values or the last month or even all data. Um, yeah. If you only, the second possibility, instead of aggregating over time, would be to aggregate over the account hierarchy. So um, sum up all clicks and conversions of the corresponding ad group. Then, of course, you will receive more observations or the corresponding campaign or even the complete account. And we will do both, but let's focus on the time first. So if you have the yesterday's data and uh, perhaps one conversion and 10 clicks, the conversion rate uh, or the mean is 10%. Uh, but of course, it would be stupid to take the 10% as an estimate because it's quite unprecise due to the low data. So the confidence interval, in fact, is really high. Um, that's the range where the true conversion rate is in with a high probability. Um, if you take the last week's data, of course, the uncertainty is, uh, uncertainty is reduced. Same for month, monthly data and perhaps all account. Um, please notice that the confidence interval never reduces exactly to zero because um, the conversion rate Uh, might differ by time and of course um, the last year's conversion rates might be a bad estimator for estimating the conversion rate of tomorrow. So there's a systematic shift due to the um, recency of the data. Of course you aggregate over time. Advantage is more data, disadvantage is the systematic shift and um, you have to take into account both. This um, results in a funnel, the mean, upper confidence interval, and the lower. And this um, so called funnel might be used to estimate the conversion rate, taking into account the observations, the number of observations, and the structural dependence. So let's for now assume. We, we have a default value we are able to put into this funnel. I'll later tell how to receive this one. Um, of course, our data suggests to increase this value because of, this, uh, because of the observations of the last 30 days. And um, if you go on, obviously the mean of the last 10 days is slightly lower, but you shouldn't use this because it's too uncertain. Same for the yesterday's data. So what results? Put in your default and receive a result and that's the estimate of the conversion rate to use. Okay, what's the default? What you see is a funnel of a single keyword. Of course you could do the same for the corresponding ad group, campaign or account. And the result of the ad group funnel is the input for the keyword funnel. Why? If you don't have enough data for a single keyword, even if you take a big a time span, um, it of course makes sense to use the corresponding ad group data. So that's done in information inheritance, taking into account the number of observations, aggregation over time and over the account hierarchy. It's 
the idea is quite simple. The main problem is to estimate the confidence interval, the upper and the lower bound of these estimates. And that's what I will explain right now. There are two parts. One part is the number of, of observations um, which affect the precision of the estimate. So if you don't have enough data, your estimate is quite unprecise. Um, you handle it to use some statistical formulas, that's okay. Um, but there's a second source too. It's a structural um, standard deviation or variance. So if your conversion value is an average um, $10, and in fact, it might differ between five, ten, or fifteen dollar, depending on the volume of the shopping basket features of the user. So, even if you have infinitely many observations, this inner structural invariance does not reduce ever. So, we need to model these inner standard deviations. So, for different um, conversion values, for example. Um, 10 or $1, and um, you have different standard uh, deviations, for example, $5 for average shopping basket values of $10, and perhaps only $0.50 cent for low-value shopping basket uh, values. There might be this dependence. So Dep the standard deviation depends on our expectation values, and that's what we call mu sigma structure. Problem is, it's hard to estimate the true um, distributions, probability distributions. So it might be standard normal, or log normal, or Bernoulli, or Laplace or um, equal distribution, so whatever. And it would be stupid to assume only one because it simply might be wrong. Um, but uh, we can be quite happy using the music mass structure. We don't need to assume a certain distribution um, because it's simply enough to have a model on how the standard deviation depends on our expectation value. Usually the dependence looks like this. The standard deviation is a power of the expectation value with exponent alpha and uh, constant. And mm, you can simplify this by applying the logarithm because afterwards it's linear. And then you can have a linear fit in the structure. For all this, the different um, distributions I managed, uh, I, I mentioned. So you, that's the only you really need for estimating the confidence interval. So a sigma structure is something that is quite general and applies to a huge set of uh, different distributions, and um, enables us to model the structural um, standard deviation um, depending on our expectation value. That's the main idea. Doing this. You have both parts, so the uncertainty of the estimation and the structural uncertainty, and both sums up to the confidence intervals, to the funnel, and applying all the funnels resides in our mechanism of information inheritance. Thus, we are able to um, compute estimates for conversion rates, for conversion values, and bit adjustments too. So we have everything we need. Thanks a lot. <laughs>